Hey guys, MKBHD here, back with another High Definition Video and YouTube Tips episode number three. And uh, as you guys know, video quality is almost completely dependent on two things, your camera and your lighting. And lighting will be covered in a very soon uh, upcoming YouTube Tips video, so as you can probably guess, in this video we'll be covering your camera. And we'll be covering a wide range of cameras and camcorders, all the way from your sub $100 range, all the way to the higher budget of, say, over $1,000. So let's start at the bottom with the point and shoots and work our way up. So 100 bucks is about as low as you can go in terms of a budget for a camcorder. And if you're looking to shoot HD video, the flip, uh, flip video and flip ultra camcorders are about as good as it gets for under three digits. Uh, you can pick these up anywhere online. You can even find these in Best Buy, and they, they really have very nominal feature sets. They're not tons of features, uh, but they'll definitely get the job done for those of you looking to just get started with hardware reviews, not necessarily someone who's been doing this for a while. From the $100 to $2 range, I have a very clear winner, and that's the Sanyo Zacti CG10. By far my favorite camcorder in this range, and for a couple of reasons. Number one, it has a massive uh, three inch flip out LCD, which is really important for monitoring your video and filming yourself. Number two is it has optical zoom, five times optical zoom, and that's really good for maintaining quality while you zoom. Uh, and the next thing is that it has uh, image stabilization in the lens. This is also a really good point and shoot camera. It takes 10 megapixel photos. Uh, it has, like I said, optical zoom. Uh, it's just a really good overall nice quality camera in the $100 to $200 range. You'll be able to see some footage from that. Uh, it's really, really great. I recommend this very highly. Now, once you get above $100 to $200 and $300, you'll start to see a wide range of different types and form factors of cameras. Uh, one thing you'll see a lot more of is the point and shoots, and there are a lot of good ones out there that shoot really good quality video. Uh, the point and shoot I used with the, was the Olympus FE370, which is a pretty decent point and shoot camera. It doesn't shoot HD video, but it's really good for the price range. You also find the Nikon P7000 and the Panasonic Lumix LX5 in this price range. These are all point and shoots, so they're very portable. You'll be able to carry them in the hand. Even something like the Zac D qualifies as a point and shoot, so that's really not a big deal if you're, you're looking to have something that you can put on a tripod and record with, and then put back in your bag and take around for any other photos you need to take. Also in the two, three, four, five hundred dollar range are the camcorders, and this is where the um, the Canon Vixia series of camcorders really shine. These are going to be your camcorders that are dedicated to full HD video. You can shoot to flash or a hard drive, and they're going to take really, really high quality video, and will likely have incredible optical zoom. So you definitely want to look at this range if you have a budget of say up to four, five hundred dollars. Now when you start to get above $500 for your cameras, you're going to see a mixture of camcorders and DSLRs. Now, like I said, the Vixia series can go up to eight or $900, but if you're looking for something that has just a little bit of an edge where you get the interchangeable lenses, uh, hands down, the DSLRs shoot the best quality video you can get in low light, in high light, indoors, outdoors. It's just an awesome thing that you can shoot video with DSLRs. I use the Canon T2i, which came out last year in February. You can check out the Canon T3i, which may be coming out this February, so I wouldn't quite buy that just yet. There's also the Nikon D series with the D3100 recently being released, and that being very popular on YouTube as well. And all these cameras that I've been mentioning all fall under $1,000. If you're looking for something a little bit higher than the Canon T2i that's dedicated for video, the Canon 60D, which is a more popular version of, of the Canon DSLR series, runs for twelve to thirteen hundred dollars and has a tiltable swivel uh, LCD screen and has uh, a more expensive kit lens and things like that. That'll definitely optimize it for video. These also have things like full manual control and full control over your video, whether it's aperture or ISO range and all sorts of things like that. So th these are definitely not for the beginning YouTube user. Like I said, you can probably stay under 500 bucks for anything you want to do on YouTube and get away with it pretty easily. Anything over 500 could be considered overkill, but I'd rather have overkill than underkill, mind you. Then there are the professionals that use things like the Canon 5D Mark II, and you probably don't see their videos on YouTube that often. You'll probably find them more on things like Vimeo and other like super high quality uh, video oriented sites. But there are very, very, very high end cameras you can get uh, for around about 
$1,200. That'll look phenomenal on YouTube. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on the 600D or Canon T3i when it comes out in February. So I hope this YouTube tips episode has been pretty helpful for you guys who are looking forward to investing in a camcorder to shoot hardware reviews on YouTube. Uh, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.